Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Director of Football Sabotage with Lavorno. So in today's episode, we're actually going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do a double header in the league against Sampdoria and Inter Milan. Both teams are having fantastic, fantastic seasons and they are definitely going to be challengers for the title. So since the last time we met against Bayer Leverkusen, we followed that up with the 2-0 away win against Palermo Mazzolossi and Nahuel Ponce with the goals and Marco Max with the player of the match. We then had a home tie against Chievo and won 4-0. Ponce with the penalty, Altenaire, Oscar Lopez and an own goal secured the victory. And what was a slightly rotated side going into our Champions League match against Bayer Leverkusen? Which was probably a mistake. We ended up getting beat 2-1 away from home against Bayer Leverkusen. Ponce put us in front inside two minutes in a match that we did dominate, but we couldn't create the chances. Their own goal from our keeper Cruz, a goal in the 69th, and Bayer Leverkusen are well in the hunt for the top of our Champions League group stage. We then went away to Benevento in what was a tight game, which we won 1-0. Ponce with the goal in the 24th minute. We then scraped past Juventus 1-0, Radovic with a goal in the 15th minute in a game we did dominate. And finally was a match against CSK Moscow in the Champions League which we won 3-0, Ventroni, Ponce and Radovic with the goals. And all of that sees our Champions League group stage look like this. We are top on 12 points, by Leverkusen a second on 9 points. So we are actually qualified, which is the reason I'm not bringing you for the final game again today. Uh, we do have the head-to-head -head record over Bayer Leverkusen 1, so I think we're pretty much guaranteed top of the table. We beat Bayer Leverkusen 3-0, they beat us 2-1, so even if we were to get beat by Feyenoord and Bayer Leverkusen were to win, I'm pretty sure a head-to-head -head record would go in our favour and we would still qualify top of the group. Now in terms of the league table, this is how things stand. We are top, but only one point clear of unbeaten Inter Milan, which is one of the reasons why I really did want to play them today. Sampdoria fell off a little bit since we last met. They have drew once and lost twice in the past four games. So they did win nine out of nine to start the season. But they're still in the hunt. They're only three points behind us. So it's important that we get a win today. So this is the lineup that's going to face uh, Sampdoria in today's game. Cruz will start in goal. Zango is back from injury. So he's going to start at centre-back with Marks. Ventroni and Lopez as our attack and win-backs with Patrick in that defensive midfield role. Solossi and Pizzullo have really cemented themselves as our two best centre midfielders this season. So they are going to start for today's game. Udim in that attack and centre midfield with Ralevich and Ponce leading the line. So they come at us with the 4-2-3-1 wide formation. Lucas Toussart, very, very good player. Uh, 32 now, but he is a fantastic player. Kovacs, if you can remember back all them seasons ago, we sold him to Sampdoria for £12.5 million. Pounds. I don't think he's developed into like a world-class centre-half, but he's not too bad whatsoever. He's a decent little player. Um, anyone else I recognise here? One of the things about Sampdoria I didn't realise was the fact that they are actually in the Champions League. So they got Champions League spot last season, which completely passed me by. So they are a very, very good side and we need to be at our best if we're to get our win today. We're from home as well. Now, generally when I'm running my saves, once we're in the Champions League, you very you see very little league player um, coming from me because I do like to live com the Champions League stuff because that becomes the main focus once you're at the top of your division. But it's nice to sort of have Inter Milan and Sampdoria being really two really good teams chasing us for the title because it keeps us at our best and punts, puts us in front inside a minute. Ralevich with the assist. We'll see how it all plays out here. Ventroni with the ball in. It's really poor clear. Kovac's doing us a favour there. Probably owes us a little bit anyway. So Pons puts us in front. But yeah, as I was saying, not often when you see league play from me. So I'm glad to bring you this live comp today. The double we're going to play in the Milan after this. Another highlight now. Ventroni once again on this right-hand side. Solossi finds the wayward pass. And he drives into the box. Takes a strike. Udem's on the edge. Oh, he hits the post. And their defenders react first and they get a clear. Free kick now for Sampdoria. 22 minutes in. Cruz with a big, big save. Oh, that was very, very close. Another highlight now. 25 minutes in. Ralevich is in the box. It falls to Solossi on the edge. And he takes a strike. He gets his second goal of this season. Matt Solossi doing absolutely fantastic work for us in the centre of midfield. Kyle Wright has been sort of the sacrifice we've made in centre of midfield. After last season's competition between... But all three of them really, but Pizzullo was the main one who I wanted to keep in. And Solossi and Kyle Wright were fighting for that starting spot. And Solossi's definitely made it his own in the first 15 games or so of this season. So we'll keep an eye on the league table. Inter Milan aren't actually playing today, neither are Napoli. But I would really like 
to knock Inter Milan off their perch, currently unbeaten so far this season. But we go in at half-time, 2-0 up, a very confident performance by us so far, nothing really suggesting that Sampdoria might be competitive with us towards the back end of this season. They have dropped off a little bit in the past four games or so, and another defeat here would be really detrimental to their Champions League efforts, really. I think they were in fourth position before the start of this game, and only three teams qualify for the Champions League for Italy. So we'll continue on with this highlight. We'll see if it actually leads to anything. It was straight from kickoff. Lopez plays a ball in, Keeper claims it, and that will be that. Another highlight now, and it might be a Samto. Oh no, not a red. Oh Ventroni, why? He was on. He was in his own half still. Why have you chopped him down? That has really, really, really put the spanners in the works. We're going to take off Ralovic, and um, we're going to drop our wing backs back as well. We'll keep Ponce on. We'll keep Udem on. They will be our attacking force going forward. Uh, hopefully Diego Cafania is fit. He is. He's going to go in at right back. And we're going to go to a cautious mentality as well. We will look to really lower the tempo to sort of kill this game off if we can. Um, they are playing quite wide so we'll keep everything else the same. And we'll see how we fare after them changes. But going full second half pretty much down to 10 men. Ventroni has definitely let us down. Highlight now corner for Sampdoria. It's, I've got a feeling. I've got a feeling. 70 minutes in now, we will look to make a change. Lopez can come off for Gonzalo Alves. Patrick's going to end up staying on. I wouldn't mind getting Carl Wright on for Pizzullo in the centre of midfield. 10 minutes to go. Despite being down to 10 men, Sampdoria haven't really looked to push their agenda too much. I wonder if they've changed. They haven't even, they've actually went less attacking, really. They've lost the attack midfielder and brought on a defensive midfielder. So it looks like we're going to get away with it and get away with a 2-0 win, hopefully, as long as this chance doesn't actually go in the back of the net. No, we'll get it cleared. And there we are, say, Sampdoria nil, Livorno 2. An absolutely fantastic result after the start Sampdoria have had. Let's get into the Inter game. So we are back for today's game against Inter Milan. We'll do the quick pick and we'll see what's thrown up. Ventroni and Patrick are both suspended for today's game, which is not ideal. But I think apart from that, this is how we're going to line up. Cruising goal, Zango and Marks at centre-back. Cafania will have to play at right wing-back. Pizzullo will have to play in defensive midfield. And Oscar Lopez will play at left wing-back. In central midfield, it will be Solossi and Kyle Wright as Pizzullo is playing in defensive midfield. Udem, Ralovic and Ponce will lead the line. Now, interesting thing about Inter Milan, I wanted to take their undefeated record today. But they've actually got beaten the last game against Cagliari, so... They are still hot in our tail, but they have been defeated this season. They are coming at us with a 4-5-1. Sergio Rico in goal. Juan Hernandez, he has been um, a little bit of a sore spot for us over the years. PSG, Real Madrid, Inter Milan. He's played for them all and he has scored goals against us with all of them teams, I do think. Uh, Riestra, I think, is a decent centre-half. I think I looked at him once upon a time, but no longer. Dil Rossen's always a good player. He has developed quite nicely on this game. He's 31 now, so he's declined a little bit. Yeah, we'll kick off and we'll see how we get on against Inter Milan. So as I said, they did get beat in their last league game. So they are now in third position on 33 or 34 points, I think it was. Uh, 34 points, they are one point behind Napoli. So they're actually on 33. Um, they've obviously got the point from net this game if we do draw. Napoli are the main competition now, I do think. Inter Milan and Sampdoria sort of wavering a little bit, particularly after that game for Inter Milan, as Ralovic puts us 1-0 up in front. The assistant hasn't stopped. The referee is going over to VAR, so we'll see if this goal stands or not. Hopefully it does. Speed it up, FM. There we are. There's the replay, which means it has went into the back of the net. Pizzullo with the strike. It falls to Ralovic after a deflection, and he gets it at the second time of asking. So let's say we win this game and Napoli win theirs. We will only be two points clear of them going into... Well, we've got a few games left before the halfway point, but I think we can safely assume that the league has started to take shape after 15 games or so. We'll pick up with another highlight. Juan Hernandez tries to get in the back. Mark or Marks does excellently to get interception, but his pass was quite poor and in the Milan retained possession. Ralovic pinches the ball after a dilly-dally by the... Uh, centre half there for Inter Milan. Pizzullo now has the ball. Oscar Lopez going down this left hand side. Decent ball in. Ralovic goes a little bit wide with that header. 
Another highlight, this time it's a corner for Inter Milan. Marks clears and Udem can break for us. Come on, mate. Turn on the afterburners. Who's this? It's Ralovic. Can he beat number 17? He doesn't need to. It was like a 4 on 1 there. Udem with the ball in. Solossi's there. And he hits the bar. We really, really should have made our chance count there after an absolute fantastic break by Udem. Another highlight now, and we are in an attacking position. Hopefully, Lopez does not give the ball away. Pizzullo, who haven't got much width there. Cafania. Can he get past his man? He can't. He plays it back to Pizzullo. To Udem on the edge of the box. Lopez is there. Kyle Wright will keeping the ball well, but we're not really breaking them down right now. Pizzullo to Ralovic. He turns. Hits the ball. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear, Sergio Rico. I feel so bad for goalkeepers when this happens to them on the game. A uh, really great turn and spin by Ralovic and a decent strike that hits the post. And Rico is just, un well, well, I don't know if I can say that was unfortunate. I thought he dove for that, but no, he just moonwalks back in and we get our second goal of the game. So there we are, it's half time, Livorno 2, Inter Milan 0. It's been a little bit easier. I thought these games would have been a little bit more difficult after the way both Sampdoria and Inter Milan had started the season. But particularly in this game, we really are dominating the match and Inter Milan are not creating too much. So with that in mind, we are going to save some of our legs, if at all possible. So Lossi can come off for Jovino. Um, Udem can come off for Altena. And then we'll save our final sub just in case any injuries or red cards happen. Eight minutes to go in this match. We will make our final change. We'll get Weber on. To give him his customary like five minutes or so per game that we try to give him. We'll take Ralovic off and see what Ponce and Weber can do up front together. Altenaire comes forward. He finds Weber in the box. He takes the strike and Weber. That's the sort of thing Weber can do. He needs more game time, the poor lad. But with Ponce and Ralovic, I find it incredibly difficult to justify dropping either of them. As Altenaire does well as well, who hasn't had much game time over Udem. And Udem's not exactly setting the world alight, you know. He's not creating and go scoring goals that much so maybe Altena deserves a shot in the first team but Udem has the potential he's definitely got the better attributes it's just whether I can get the performances out of him or not as we go towards the final highlight of the game 3-0 up against Inter Milan are they going to get one back they're not till Rossum plays it out for a goal kick and that will be all she wrote Livorno 3 Inter Milan, Inter Milan 0 we'll see what that does to the league table I think we're already quite clear on what it will do but there we are we're five points clear from Napoli who do have a game in hand in second but we've put some very very good distance in between us and Inter Milan in third position so it looks like potentially it could be a Napoli Livorno runaway as it was Milan and Livorno last season looking forward to the next episode it will be the January transfer window um, obviously we've got our final Champions League group game against Feyenoord coming up next I do think we finish top no matter what happens, but I expect us to beat Feyenoord anyway, so hopefully that isn't even a consideration going into the final game, but I'll fill you in in the next episode. If you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like, and if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.